settling in. We've had a nice break and we are ready now to see two videos here, two spokespersons, and ask those spokespersons questions. Two candidates are competing for the office of the UUA president, succeeding Reverend William Sinkford, who completes his second term of office in June of 09. The UUA president is the chief executive officer and primary spokesperson for the Unitarian Universalist Association. Today, we will explore the candidacies of the Reverend Dr. Laurel Hallman, senior minister of the First Unitarian Church in Dallas, and the Reverend Peter Morales, senior minister of Jefferson Unitarian Church in Golden, Colorado. The forum will feature pre-recorded stump speeches by each candidate with technical assistance from Ben Stalling. Testimonials from approved spokesperson for each candidate, questions and answers prepared by each spokesperson, and conclude with questions from the floor as time permits. And in order to keep us on time, that question and answer period will probably be cut pretty short. Let's take a look at the candidacy of the Reverend Dr. Laurel Hallman. In gay spirituality, covenantal relationship, faithful stewardship, these are the principles that drive my candidacy for president of the UUA. Hello, I'm the Reverend Dr. Laurel Hallman, and I'm running for president of the Unitarian Universalist Association. Why am I running? As we face a new century with new challenges, Unitarian Universalists deserve a skilled, collaborative leader who knows how to take risks and build alliances in the name of our liberal faith. We need to call upon a visionary pastor who has met the challenges of steady and sustained congregational growth and knows how congregations grow. We need an eloquent and inclusive voice rooted in the life of the Spirit to speak words of faith, freedom, and justice to a polarized world. I bring this broad range of gifts and talents to this holy work of religious leadership. From two decades of work with community organizing groups, I bring respect for the value of organized power in the work of justice making. From long association with interfaith groups, I bring great energy to the work of building alliances in unexpected places on behalf of the greater good. From almost three decades of parish ministry, I bring a tireless love of liberal religion. I believe in the capacity of our free faith to change lives. I have the deep knowledge of how to spread the good news of Unitarian Universalism. At this uncertain yet exciting time for our association and for our nation, I believe I offer the qualities that will support the health and the future of Unitarian Universalism in the world. That is why I want to be the next president of the UUA and why I am asking for your support. Faithful stewardship. Being a faithful steward of our movement means being present in both good times and bad. Being accountable to those whom we serve. Being thoughtful in our use of resources and being thankful to those who share our commitments to this life-changing faith. I have learned the lessons of faithful stewardship with the people of the First Unitarian Church of Dallas. I learned the importance of transparency and openness. I learned to care for and to develop our financial resources in recessions as well as in good times. 
I came to understand what a privilege it is to give. And I asked others to grow in their generosity. As president of the UUA, I will bring with me the lessons of these years. In working with the staff, board of trustees, and investment professionals, I will preserve and increase your generous gifts so that we can invest in the faith and the world we dream about. From investing in the preparation of the finest ministers in our time, to the religious education of our children, youth, and adults, to the use of cutting edge technology to reach those outside our walls whose hearts resonate with our faith. These efforts comprise some of the building blocks for our future. Other opportunities await us that we haven't even yet seen. But none of them will be available to us tomorrow if we fail to make wise choices today. I am prepared to help make those choices in order to liberate our congregations for vital health, significant growth, and dynamic service. Covenantal relationships. Ours is a relational faith, and our covenant is at the core of our practice. As president of the UUA, all that I do will be undertaken in the spirit of that covenant. First and foremost, I will keep faith with our religious heritage of prophetic freedom, remembering that we need not think alike to love alike working to create bonds of trust to sustain us in the hard work of justice making. I will keep faith with our congregations understanding that whether large, medium, or small, whether society or fellowship, whether church, congregation, or community, it is your energy and commitment that undergirds our association and its life. And I will keep faith with our association, which is not some aggregate of individuals, but is the gathered community of congregations meant to support and to serve one another. I will keep faith with these groups by offering accountability for my leadership as president and expecting accountability in return from all who hold positions of trust on behalf of Unitarian Universalism. The work of our association's board of trustees to move to a system of policy governance is only one example of our desire for greater accountability and transparency. As president, I will support and expand that effort among both paid and volunteer staff so that we ensure safe, responsible, and verifiable practices at every level of our association. Engaged spirituality. All our work in the world, all our witness to freedom and justice, arises from the depth of our own religious tradition and our openness to the wisdom of other faiths. I was reminded of that when I was privileged to be part of a spiritual retreat with Thich Nhat Hanh. In my time at Plum Village in France, in the presence of this grace-filled man, I saw how profoundly healed even the most wounded person could be, and how powerful and active a witness for change, justice, and liberation any one of us could be once we learn the power that comes from going inward before moving outward. This spiritual practice has been the grounding of my ministry. It has helped to deepen me in ways I could have never imagined. Turn, I have worked throughout my career to transmit to others that sense of the holy and its capacity to open us to greater depth, greater effectiveness, and greater joy. Our current president, the Reverend Bill Singford, opened a long shut door when he spoke of our need for a language of reverence. As president of the UUA, I plan to walk through that open door our big tent is surely big enough to include the diverse as well as the divine, inclusive enough to shelter lively conversation as well as prayer, gracious enough to embrace the importance of human agency even as we invoke the many names of God. It is this big tent that gives us the power to covenant together and to change the world.
I will be a relentless champion of this large faith so that all of us have a place at the table of Unitarian Universalism. These are the broadest strokes of my platform, a mere outline of my hopes and dreams for our association of congregations. They are a symbol of all that we will create together, a future worthy of those who have given us our free faith and worthy of those who will follow us in years to come. For all these reasons, I'm asking for your vote. I'm the Reverend Dr. Laurel Holland. Thank you. Laurel Holman is represented today by the Reverend Jan Eller Isaacs, Unity Church Unitarian, St. Paul, Minnesota. If I could take one minute before my five minutes begins. I want to just let you all know a little bit about who I am. I am co-minister at Unity Church Unitarian, but I want you to know that I am a lifelong Unitarian and then Unitarian Universalist after merger. I grew up at All Souls Church in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and then my parents moved to the San Francisco Bay Area where they were involved in a lay-led fellowship uh, for a number of years. And so I know what it is to grow up in a large church and to be a teenager in a struggling lay-led fellowship. And I found um, that Unitarian Universalism was a powerful and gracious container for all of my spiritual growth and, and learning. And um, it has been a faith that has nurtured me, my family, and I am sister of Jim Eller, who is the minister at All Souls Church in Kansas City. So if you think, I wonder if they know each other, um, the answer is yes. And before I begin my formal remarks about Laurel, I want to say that I have been involved at varying levels of the previous two campaigns. And what marks this campaign against, over and against the other two is the degree of civility and openness and a love of each other that is present in how Laurel and Peter treat each other. This is not always evident in the election chat rooms, um, but what is true is that Carol Hebikowski is a trusted and respected friend and colleague in my life. I don't quite understand why she's doing this, but... Um, <laughs> um, but, um, but I respect her profoundly, and my respect for her and my respect for Liz and Matt is not diminished uh, because of their support for Peter. And Peter is also a well-respected colleague of, of mine, and I, and I want to say that. Um, so I think that Laurel and Peter have created an election that we will hope to emulate for the rest of the future of our faith. So now, having said those remarks, now I will turn to you why I am a group of ministers who actually approached Laurel Holman and begged her to run as president of the Unitarian Universalist Association. Because Laurel is a minister of profound and deep integrity, she practices that very engaged spirituality of which she spoke. And she brings that sense of ability to cast a vision and inspire others. So she inspires self, and she inspires those that work with her, and she knows how to organize, manage, and inspire a staff. She has one of the best working staffs in the Unitarian Universalist Association. Laurel knows church life in her bones. She has served a small congregation, a mid-sized congregation that became a large church. The Dallas congregation doubled in size in its years of ministry under Laurel. And she is one of four 
ministers who have been invited to the White House under Bill Clinton. And I believe that she was invited to come to the White House and meet with the Clintons because of her exemplary leadership in social justice and in community partnership in the Dallas area. Laurel is one of those rare creatures that is able to lead and collaborate simultaneously. And I think she brings the kind of leadership we truly need now. She comes absolutely from a sense of wanting to empower others and to collaborate with them and from that collaboration create change. She is not a lone ranger. And, uh, and sometimes she doesn't come across as forcefully as she might because she is so grounded in that uh, empowering and collaborative style. But that doesn't mean that she is not able to lead, that it doesn't mean that she isn't able to make hard decisions. Another reason why we asked Laurel to run for president of the UUA was because we know that a huge part of the president's job, I'm sorry to tell you, is fundraising. And other than the presidents of the UUA, Laurel is the most successful minister at fundraising in our association. She has raised more money than any other minister separate from the ministers who have served as president of the UUA. So this is a huge part of her job and we already know that she is excellent at it. She values congregational life and will work to bring an enriching, um, enriching programs and structure to congregational life. She will work to engage the smallest congregation in theological discourse and in partnership. She will mobilize resources for growth. She has grown everything she has touched and I think sometimes um, there's this, Peter's the growth candidate and Laurel's the, uh, the, the, the what? Depth, Depth uh, candidate. And, and actually, they both bring both those qualities. Laurel is committed to the growth of our faith. She has a sustained commitment to our faith that we have seen over decades. And she is the kind of person that when people work with her, they stay on staff for a long time. You don't see turnover in her staff because people love working with her. And what we know is that people at the UUA are needing that level of inspiration, but more importantly, what they are needing is the UUA is what we would call an accountability adverse institution. <laughs> and it has, it has limited the possibilities of our faith. And Laurel <coughs> is an expert at creating systems of accountability, of, of encouraging growth when growth is possible and making clear what people are working for, what they are working with, and, and being honest. She is able to fire, which it may be the first president of the UUA who has that capacity. Um, and, and she has the capacity to, to set a clear vision of which people can respond and, and work from. Laurel has more experience in policy governance than any other minister in our association. She knows policy governance inside and out, and she understands its values of transparency and depth. And she will work in partnership with the UUA board to bring about the transition to policy governance, which is always a little messy and never easy, but will work to, uh, in true partnership with the UUA board, and I think will make that transition far easier, uh, frankly, than it would be with Peter, who's not as well-grounded or as well-versed in policy governance. 
Um, and I think that I want to uh, close with, she has great faith in our liberal saving faith. And one of the, another reason why I am supporting Laurel is that coming from Dallas, coming from her poor rural background and discovering Unitarian Universalism in this district at the church I have the honor and privilege to serve as a young single mother. What she knows in her own life is the saving power of our faith. But in Dallas, Texas, what she also knows, and any, um, Kathy was talking about those of us who come from congregations where we are very much the minority. Laurel knows what our liberal faith can offer people when they are starving for what we have to offer. And she brings that perspective to the presidency. She knows how to work with media, and she has been covered extensively in the media in Dallas. She knows how to work so that our issues are elevated in the public realm and is uh, very good at, at doing that and, and is known as, a, as, a, as an important and significant leader in terms of the religious communities of Dallas, Texas. And that's significant because just down the road from the Unitarian Church of Dallas is a 10,000 member Baptist church. And is my five minutes up? My five minutes is up. In closing, I want to say something actually not about Laurel, but I want to talk about leading a tour, a heritage tour to Boston. And having the young girls so full of passion for our faith, looking at the list of UU presidents and saying, I don't see a woman's name up on the list. Is there ever going to be a woman president, Jan? And I say, someday, someday. So I'm hoping that that someday is now. Thank you very much. Let's take a look at candidate Reverend Peter Morales. Hello, I'm Peter Morales, and I'm running for the presidency of the UUA. And I wish I could be with you in person. It's become trite for candidates in all elections to say that we stand at the crossroads. But sometimes it's actually true. And it is true now for us as an association. We face a choice in this election between two very different futures. On the one hand, there's a future that emphasizes our tradition and looking inward. And that's fine, except I believe our times demand something quite different. My campaign is about looking forward into the future and about looking outside. Outside to those people who are hungry for religious community and outside to our world that needs compelling prophetic witness. I've highlighted four major challenges that face us. I thank you for paying attention to them. I look forward to your consideration and thank you for your commitment to our association. I'm running for the presidency of the UUA because I am convinced that we can be the religion for our time. We can revitalize and transform our movement and play a much bigger role in people's lives and make a much greater difference in our communities and nationally. But in order to do that, we're gonna have to make some changes. We can't keep doing things as we have because we're living in a time of very, very rapid change. We're also living at a time when hundreds of thousands of people are coming to us every year seeking religious community. I want to highlight four areas that I think are absolutely crucial to our future. 
and talk about why I think I bring the skills and background that are important to leading at this time. The first and the most important is growing our movement. Everything depends on our ability to grow our movement. But we need to reframe our thinking about growth. This isn't growth for the sake of growth. Growth because we'd like to be bigger. We need to think of growing our movement as the moral equivalent of feeding the hungry and housing the homeless. People are coming to us every week hungry for the connection that, that a real religious community can bring them. I bring not only experience in growing a church, having it about double in size, from 400 to a little less than 800 in nine years, but I also bring more than a decade of working at the national level on real, practical, congregationally based, low cost initiatives to grow our movement. I was responsible with members of my congregation for a video that was sent to every congregation in our movement on ideas for growth. The conference that led to another DVD, listening to experience, was the result of my recommendation. As director of district services, I helped shift the emphasis in our field staff to partnering with congregations. I understand what it takes to help grow our congregations. I bring a wealth of experience in doing that at the national level. The second major challenge, unfortunately, is this economic crisis in which we find ourselves. First, let me say that this economic crisis is the result of the misfeasance and malfeasance of people who are in positions of responsibility. But even deeper, there's a religious and moral issue that's behind it. It's about living in a culture that has gotten intoxicated with individual acquisition and has lost sight of that fundamental truth that all the great religious traditions teach us, that we're in this together, that the common good is paramount, that compassion should rule us. But the truth is that as we move forward, the UUA is going to have to do everything that it does. Everything it does to support our programs, outreach, religious education, support of our congregations. It's going to have to do all of this with probably 20% less money. That means moving from a budget of $26 million to just a little over $20 million a year. The UUA is not a church. It's not a large church. It is a large complex national religious organization. What it needs right now for these coming years is background in management, someone who understands how complex organizations work, who understands metrics, who understands how to evaluate programs for effectiveness and move resources. I bring a rich and broad background in state government, at the State of California, I was involved in a major reorganization of uh, welfare program operations. I've worked in the corporate sector for a large publishing company. I've done an internship in higher education administration. And more importantly, I have two years of senior staff experience at the UUA as director of district services, and I spent a year <coughs> on the board of trustees. I understand our association, and I understand how to manage a complex organization. The third great challenge before the next president is to build upon the legacy of Bill Sinkford in the area of public witness. This is an area that's absolutely vital because people look to the president of our association to be the spokesperson on the great moral issues of our time. One of the things that Bill has done amazingly well is to not only be articulate as he speaks to issues, but to do it in a very strategic way, not taking on all issues, but focusing on those areas where we can make a difference. His work needs to be the foundation for the next president. It must not be the high watermark of Unitarian Universalism in speaking out on public issues. Before entering the ministry, I was in journalism. I spoke out 
on gay rights issues in a lumber town in Oregon. I was involved in combating the religious right as they tried to bring in creationism into our public schools. As a minister, I've been involved with the Interfaith Alliance of Colorado, and We Believe Colorado. I've helped to draft language that the governor adopted on the debate on immigration. I've stood on the Capitol steps with the governor and with other religious leaders. I am comfortable speaking out on public issues, and I'm passionate about doing so. The final great challenge is creating a new ministry for a new America. First of all, let me talk about the new America. We are in the midst of perhaps the greatest demographic and cultural shift in our history. Three quarters of Americans who are 70 and older are white. And yet if you look at children who are 10 and younger, the great majority are not white. And demographers tell us that in another generation or so, America is going to become a predominantly minority country. We've seen images of this at the rally when Obama was elected president, the new diversity in America. We need to learn to be an effective religious voice to this new America. Also in our association, almost 40% of our ministers are 58 and older. So in the next 10 years, while America is changing dramatically, we're going to have a tremendous turnover in ministry. We can use this as an opportunity to develop a ministry that is passionate, grounded, contextual, and much more diverse than we've had before. I will bring together leaders from our seminaries and from other stakeholder groups to put together a strategy that we've never had for recruiting, training, placing, mentoring, nurturing, developing the ministry, and not just the parish ministry, the religious education ministry, the music ministry, for this new America that we're moving into. Those are the four great challenges. Growth, dealing with the economic crisis, being effective in public witness, and creating a new ministry for a new America. These are our four great challenges, and I believe that I bring the background and skills to lead effectively as we address these together. I ask for your support. I ask for your vote. It's going to take all of us. But together, together we can revitalize this movement of ours. Together we can create the religion for our time. is represented by the Reverend Carol Habakowski, First Unitarian Universalist Church, Rochester, Minnesota. I first came to know Peter through his voice in Soul Work. Soul Work is a book about diversity and anti-racism in our movement. It was an edited transcript of UU leaders who had gathered a few years ago to look at where we are and where we can become uh, in the future in terms of diversity. As I read the book, I noticed Peter's voice. It was nuanced, it was down to earth, and I felt like it helped to move the conversation in interesting and new directions. I began to listen for his voice, anticipate it, and look forward to hearing what he had to say. <laughs> I was teaching at the time. I invited him to come and teach a section on multiculturalism and diversity, anti-racism, in a course on ethics that I was teaching. He did that. He did a fine job, and we became friends after that. A few years ago, when I became the minister in Rochester, we began to use the, his resources on growth, the resources that he developed with his congregation in Golden, Colorado. 
Those resources invited us to reflect on our religious values, on the meaning of religious community to us, and why growth is vital to our message and to our movement. Those resources helped us to develop our ministry of hospitality. They helped us in our membership growth. Uh, to me, I call them the golden resources. Over the past year, I have watched the candidacy of Peter Morales for the presidency of the UUA. I've had an opportunity to have conversations with him and to look at the materials and see the kind of spirit that is surrounding his campaign. What impresses me is the depth and the breadth of his experience and his vision. I want to invite you to check out our, the Morales table and the website. There are also some DVDs that include the piece that you just heard. To check it out and to see the kind of leadership that he has exercised in the private and the public sectors as well as within our movement. He's known for his effective management and for his bold leadership, his bold leadership. His commitment to our movement comes from a deep place of Unitarian Universalist values. He wants us to live up to our potential, our potential in these times of change. His vision is of a caring, prophetic, and vital religious movement where we will share with those who are hungry for the kinds of things we have to offer. I want to take just a moment and tell you a little bit about this triptych that's been with us yesterday and today. It comes from the congregations on the Iron Range, 60 miles north of here. I found Unitarian Universalism through the doors of those congregations and I came into the ministry through those congregations. The two congregations up there were started a oh, hundred years ago almost by Finnish American immigrants with the support of the American Unitarian Association's Department of New, uh, New Immigrants. It was an outreach effort, a homeland mission to reach some of the waves of immigrants that were arriving on our shores in the beginning of the 20th century. This painting depicts an immigrant family. They came here, as many of those Finnish immigrants did, with uh, no English or very little English, with very little money. And it, it shows them overlooking a landscape of their American dream. The Unitarian Church offered them a place to create a spiritual home while they grew new roots in American soil. We also live in a time of great change when the face of America is changing. To remain relevant, we need to open ourselves in new ways to those coming here, to those coming here now from many lands with their many dreams and visions. Peter's first language is Spanish, and it's been a pleasure to see him interact on that campaign with people in his comfort level in languages in culture. It's a vision, uh, an example that I think we could do well with. Peter has the life experiences, I believe, and the energy and the vision that I think we need right now. He will challenge our movement and he will challenge us to bring our deepest values, our universalist vision to life in our congregations and beyond. Thank you. Hi, I'm Kathy Burek, Vice President of District Board. We'll move now to uh, questions. We had three submitted in advance and the candidates were given an opportunity to prepare answers. 
Uh, we will, uh, I'll read the question and then we'll invite the spokespeople to answer them um, and ask that they limit their comments to two minutes and then we will open it up if we have time to further questions. So the first question, both of the candidates in their own way speak to welcoming congregations. Please comment on missteps of the past in growing our UU congregations and more importantly speak to future plans. Since Laurel's video was first, we'll start with uh, Peter's spokesperson, uh, Carol. Peter has a strong sense that we can grow our movement, that we need to grow our movement. Growing our movement for him is a moral imperative on the order of feeding the hungry and housing the homeless. Millions of people are seeking the liberal religious community that we have, searching for something beyond consumer culture. On any given Sunday, 5,000 seekers will come to our churches and most of them never return. This past year, our growth as a movement was essentially zero. We are about the same size as we were 48 years ago at the time of merger. Our country has grown by 70%. However, says Peter, our potential for growth is dizzying. We have dozens of churches that are growing rapidly. The church Peter serves has gone from under 400 to almost 800 in 10 years. My sense is, his sense is, and mine too, that churches grow if they create true religious community. Our growth efforts have placed an emphasis on expensive initiatives from headquarters, initiatives like advertising campaigns and spending a million dollars to launch a large church in the Dallas area and yet we have not grown as a movement. Peter believes that expensive initiatives from Boston won't grow our faith. We can only grow our faith one relationship at a time, one Sunday at a time, one congregation at a time. The role of the president is to help create a sense of urgency about growth and to frame it as a moral imperative. Peter senses that the UUA's effort towards growth are well served when the district staff, the field staff, focus on working in partnership with congregations, helping congregations tailor growth strategies to their particular challenges. He'd like to see more congregations mentoring one another around growth, helping each other become what we long to be. Laurel believes that growth begins in the local congregation when we all understand that each member of our congregations are members of the hospitality committee and that our task is not to run from the person with the green mug or the red mug or the yellow mug, whatever color the mug is in your congregation, that we are all practicing our, the radical hospitality that is at the heart of our faith. She, along with Peter, agrees that uh, expensive uh, uh, programs based at the UUA level are not what we need. What we need is to encourage a language of, of values and engaged in that conversation at a local congregational level so that people understand how to talk about those deeply held values and can talk to their neighbors so that we are encouraging one another to go out and proselytize and share the good news of our liberal faith and that we begin to work collaboratively in covenant with one another, that our most successful outreach programs have been regionally based and not nationally based. And that one of the things that she is already working on at the UUA, one of our most successful growth experiences, and I'm really, I, I wanna frame this in all honesty, was the response to the Knoxville shooting. Because for the first time, people heard about our liberal faith on the national stage. And it was the UUA's ability to respond to that crisis 
so, and we responded in depth and integrity and we did it well. And, it, and people have been coming in greater numbers to our congregations and that she believes it's those kinds, of, and setting up that capacity at the UUA is important. Is my two minutes up? I had so much more to say. <laughs> I, unfortunately, we're only going to have time for two of the three questions that were submitted, uh, but I would invite you to stop by the tables because I'm sure the spokespeople will be there and they will have the, the candidates' answers and will be happy to share information um, on any other position that uh, you might want to ask about. Question is, I am convinced that there are many, many closet UUs in our country and elsewhere who would join our congregations if only they knew we were there. I also know that during the past few years, the UUA has developed new public relations and advertising materials for use by congregations and collections of congregations. Do you foresee that furthering this PR initiative? If not, what would you do instead to expand awareness of our denomination? If so, how would you work with congregations or collections of congregations to help them consider adopting, funding, and implementing this initiative? And we'll let Jan go first this time. I experienced those two questions as quite related, and I'm wondering if it makes sense to go to the third question. I don't mean to, to second guess you, um, but I think it would be more productive. Okay, well then the third question. Um, our denomination seems to be undergoing a philosophical shift. 20 years ago in our congregation, the concept of a Christian UU seemed nonsensical. Now our congregation has a Christian UU minister and many of the secular humanists of previous generations. Despite the acceptance of diversity, we say we believe in are feeling bereft bereft of a sanctuary from the worlds of deity, Christian or otherwise. The UU church was the one place in many UU lives where they, those who live to a different drummer, theologically speaking, could live without the expectation that they subscribe to a divine being. Where could they go on a spiritual or religious journey without having to subscribe to the supernatural? How will you lead us as we struggle with this fundamental challenge? Okay, Jen. Um, I think that Laurel sees the urgency of the future of our religion based in this question. And that we, for the sake of the future of our faith, need to find better ways of getting along and showing mutual respect for one another. To understand that language is a metaphor. And to appreciate the different framework metaphor and, and language that we use to talk about that which is beyond us. Laurel has great respect for our humanist tradition and understanding, and she believes that our humanist efforts have taken us out of the age of superstition and dogma, and that it is that our humanists have called us out of that. But, and, but what we need now is what Peter was talking about, is a way to talk about an openness to the mystery that includes all of us. She talks about the big tent. And I believe that when she talks about that big tent, she's talking about finding language that does not exclude, but includes all of us. And that it is the language of art and literature and science that we can share in rational terms, but in rational terms that also speak the language of reverence. Peter believes that rigid religion is not ultimately about what we believe. Religion is much more about what we love, what we share, and what we aspire to become. A congregation is a religious community of memory and hope. The humanist theist debate is the wrong discussion. It creates division and distraction it is a debate no one wins and everyone loses. The questions we should address are these. What do we long to create together? 
What do we want to be with one another? What is our image of the beloved community? How best can we join hands and work together for compassion, justice, peace, and freedom, and a planet that will sustain life? Peter believes that if we share a commitment to compassion, if we want to create a place where children are raised in a loving community, where elders are honored, if we want to end war and oppression, if we want to preserve life on earth, then we have the same religion. Compassion, justice, peace, community. These are good humanist values. They are also the teachings of Jesus. Let's join hands and bring these values to life. <coughs> On behalf of the District Board and the Conference Planning Committee, I'd like to thank Jen and Carol for being here to represent their candidates. <laughs> Okay, let me give it to you briefly, and there's more information available. Um, every congregation has allotted a certain number of delegates to General Assembly based on your size, and ministers are, um, ex are automatically given uh, voting rights. Your congregation can vote by absentee ballot if you're not going to be able to send people to GA, and there's um, your congregation president or minister will get materials in the mail shortly if they don't have them already that will explain all of that. And if you do go to General Assembly, then there'll be a process that they'll explain for voting on site. There will be another um, candidates forum, um, I think, at General Assembly, so you can wait, your congregation can take a vote. Under our system of congregational polity, nobody can tell you, your congregation, how to make its decision. That's up to you. Uh, but there is the absentee ballot method or the on-site method. And there'd be more information at um, the UUA.org. Okay. Thank you all for your patience. Um, we are unfortunately out of time, but um, Carol and Jan are here. Their tables are here, so please do um, educate yourselves and bring this information back to your congregations. Thanks again. <laughs>